Bible study. My name is Brian Mason, and the title of today's study is God is Light. In 1 John chapter 1, and continuing on from yesterday, at verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Whose message? Whose message had been heard of? The message was heard by John from Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus had spoken about God being light. Jesus had spoken of himself as the light of the world. I am the light of the world. So that there is a message here, a very clear message, and that it is that God is light. And as John says, in him is no darkness at all. So that there is a contrast between light and dark. And God and all that is of God is seen as being light. And this is so important that John, as he was speaking to to believers and getting across to them how that it is so important that God is seen as light and that with God, there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, that is, fellowship with Jesus Christ, because when we belong to Jesus Christ, when we have received the very life of God through Jesus Christ, then it is to have fellowship, fellowship with God and fellowship with those who also likewise have been brought to God through this living relationship which is found in Jesus Christ. And because of this, there is no walking in darkness. And if we say that we do, then what does the word make clear? If we do walk in darkness, John brings out that we lie and do not the truth. And who is the truth? What is the truth? It is of Jesus Christ himself who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And John had recorded that in his, in his gospel. But if we walk in the light, yes, this referral again to the light, as he is in the light, because Jesus, the one who said, I am the light of the world. Then, he is the light. He is light. 
and as he lives in us, then he will be our light. He has to because there's no light without him. And he sheds his light along the way. Day by day, being in that light with him. Oh, he's, a, he's such a wonderful Savior. He fills our hearts with his own life. And because of this, we can go on day by day. Otherwise, we would just be overwhelmed. Overwhelmed by the darkness which is in the world. Because whatever is not in the light and has the light of God within it is in darkness. We have fellowship. Yes, John makes it so clear that when we are in the light with Christ, then we're in fellowship, not just with God, but with those who also likewise are in Christ. Because Christ is their life also. And walking in the light the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, God's Son, cleanse of us from all sin. Not just some sin, but the word here is very clear. All sin. And that's so wonderful to know that yes, what we've done in the past has been brought out into the light. And there has been that forgiveness. And the blood of Jesus cleanses away the sin. And God himself remembers no more. Verse 8 If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Yes, there we are, not to deceive ourselves, but to know our position in Christ. That we are seen by the Father in Christ. And the blood of Jesus is our protection. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Always oh, a wonderful Jesus. Yes, when we have brought before him and given to him our sins. That which has which cut us off from God. What we may have been, every one of us was born into sin. And it is the nature of sin which 
Jesus took our sin and it was nailed to his cross so that we could be forgiven. We could receive the very life of God. We could receive the divine nature. We could exchange this human nature with all its frailties, with all that, that it was against God that each one of us, no matter who we might have been, whoever we are, we've all been in rebellion against a holy God. And Jesus came out of the way and provided the means, the way, whereby we could receive not just a pardon, but receive the very life of God into our lives. That we become as Him, as Jesus in this world. Can we take it in? Can we grasp this? It's only as God shows us that we will take hold of this and to be in that position, that place whereby He wants us to receive all the fullness of God in Jesus Christ. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. That is a clear word of warning. To make out that we're not, we're not sinners is to reject what God has done through his son at Calvary's cross. to devalue what the divine has done. To make out that we have no need of a saviour. Oh, let us be real in these days. Let us accept that God so loved the world the divine love so loved the world that he gave his very best he gave that which he loves loved most his own son to die so that guilty sinners could have the opportunity of having the burden of the sin lifted, taken away, cast away, cleansed by the blood of God himself, so that we can be looked upon by God as though we had never had sin within us. That's something. Chapter 2 My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. Here's John showing that the way of God is to go on, to go on in all that God has for us and all that God wants to do through us. 
it John knowing that man can still fall even when he is saved he can be drawn away into sin and he says if any man sin we have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ the righteous an advocate Jesus who stands in the presence of the Father Jesus, the one who makes intercession for his own. He's there. Even as I'm speaking, he's interceding on behalf of all who are his own. And Jesus, the righteous, were told. And what is righteousness? It's being made right with God. And we are made right with God when we accept that Jesus has taken our place at Calvary. And through death that is dying to sin and receiving a new life receiving the very life of God what do we receive we receive the person of Jesus Christ who is righteousness and he in God's own way, wonderful way, amazing way, becomes our righteousness. And we're seen by God as having the righteousness of Christ within us. And this is the prop propitiation for our sins. Yes, Jesus, the one who had given himself for us. And not just for, for us, for ours. No, but also for the sins of the whole world. Yes, Jesus died for you. He died for me. He lives for you. He lives for me. And he's done that for the whole world for those who've gone before for those who are currently in the world and for those who will come into the world before Jesus returns at his second coming and having said that there has to be that acceptance, that personal acceptance that Jesus did this for each one. Because in this, there is that acceptance that Jesus died for me. His death is of no value whatsoever to the one who does not accept that Jesus died in their place, died for their sin, and is asking them to accept himself as their saviour. And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his command. Yes, the word of God is that which shows us how, how to live. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, 
is a liar and the truth is not in him but whoso keepeth his word in him verily it is the love of God perfected hereby know we that we are in him so it's a life a day by day life whereby the life of the Son of God is worked out in us and through us. He that saith he abideth, in him ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. This is one of the real enlightening verses in scripture Jesus in his teaching during his earthly ministry spoke to his disciples if ye abide in me and my words abide in you ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you and John the writer of that gospel also in his epistle brings out what it means to abide as Jesus had said if ye abide in me and as an intercessor this particular verse here is a fundamental verse a verse which shows us how the abiding can take place how the abiding must take place For without abiding then how can that verse of Jesus come to pass if we're not abiding not just some of the time but all of the time and the abiding is to be walking as him in this world and we can only walk as him in this world as Jesus himself is within us the divine nature within us we can't do it otherwise we can't do it of ourselves the human and the divine are completely separate and unless we have Jesus within us there is no abiding abiding in him the one who spoke of himself as the vine and spoke of those who were his as the branches that's the abiding the vine needs the branch to bear fruit and the branch cannot exist unless it is connected as part of the vine. All oh, the, the teachings of Jesus, they're so amazing. Yet they're so practical. And he brought out that which the people of the time would understand and we too can see that that there has to be a flow of the life of Jesus from the vine to the branch and the same too in that day by day walk with him it has to be his life and only his life which is being made known 
which is being shown through us. And through that, the Father receives the glory because the fruit which comes through the life of Jesus being made manifested through those who are his is for the glory of God the Father. Father, our hearts rejoice that in, in the word that John has brought before there is that understanding of what Jesus has done, who Jesus is, and that what you want the Christian life to be, the life of thy Son, living in and through those who are his, so that his life is reaching out through whom he lives, showing the life of God, the love of God, and all that is done is for thy glory. And the two, the blood of Jesus, still cleanses from all sin and all stain. And that the life of Jesus, the resurrection life, is there for whoever will come and receive a pardon and receive his life. For thy glory and for thy glory alone, O Father, this is asked. Amen.